Hello and welcome to the first of what I hope is going to be many Building Middle Earth uh, videos. Uh, we've had Building Middle Earth showcases on the uh, channel before but they they were companion pieces to the uh, written articles over at the main site. And this first one is going to be about building this uh, Minas Tirith uh, frontage here that you can see before us. Unfortunately this started out as a written article over at the main site so uh, there's some footage that you know I did get to film when I started building it, but I'm, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of how you know we actually got to that stage. Uh, there's not an actual lot to it; it's just mainly made from foam core and polystyrene. It just, if there was videos, it'd just be a lot of me cutting foam core and polystyrene. Um, if you ever did quite a video on that, just let me know in the comments, and we can make one. Uh, the main tips to remember are when cutting foam core is to use a really sharp knife so if you've got a standing knife change the blade with some fresh blade and polystyrene really is the same principle use a sharp knife or even better is what i did with this is use a uh, hot wire cutter preferably a desktop one so uh the first thing to do is to actually get the planning stage i knew i wanted this to be a uh, span a four foot board so I made it so it do that and also I wanted it to be uh, modular so you can take bits off uh, and that is for storage you know if I was going to make this in one piece I'd have to find somewhere you know four foot long and however tall it is but at the moment these can just be uh, taken away and put in storage so with that in mind I decided upon making constructing the walls first and these are going to be 14 inches uh, uh, the gate was, um, I think it's eight, uh, eight to six inches. Let's just check that. Take measure here. Yeah, the gate's eight inches. Um, I knew the towers were going to be four inches, but I also knew that these bits would go in the middle of the tower, uh, and they're two inches. So that leaves a gap when you actually put it together of three inches either side, and that's where these little towers come in. They're three inches. Uh, giving you a total span of 48 inches. So um, the first thing I did was to actually uh, do a rough sketch, which you hopefully can see on the screen now. And then I decided to concentrate on the walls first. That's going to be what we're going to look at now. The uh, first one we're going to uh, look at making is the actual wall sections. After you've done your planning and worked out you know, how big they've got to be, you can now make them. These are just made from uh, foam core shell and as you see by the planning that I drew out these are going to be 14 inches uh, across and the actual main width of them is 3 inches uh, for these I started by cutting the top part of the floor out so I drew out a 3 by 14 section and then I needed this where the trebuchet is going so that is just a uh, six inches so it's uh but longer at the front than the back so it's uh an extra two inches at the front and an inch at the back which, which gives you your six inches and the width of it is about three and a half inches just over it take much a bit more stable three and, three and a half three and a quarter inches now uh, so that was cut out as a square so that's basically the cross and when that was done you basically need to uh, angle it off by an inch on each corner at a 45 degree angle protractor for that when that's cut out, what I did was uh, cut out the side sections so it's stable. Now these are again six, uh, five and three quarters because you allow for the width of this and two and a half wide again double the width of the uh, foam core getting two of those 
and the wolf sections you're going to need four of are like five and three quarters uh, high by five and a quarter inch and you're going to need four of those two for the front two for the back now uh, I glued those in first what I did see it there focus I use pins to hold it in place you can see the pins there if I show you on the gatehouse section I, I haven't had, but there you can see where I've had used pins to hold that in place as well as PVA next you've got to make this section now what I did for this is I made two set two bits that are five and three quarters high and about four and a quarter wide two of those it's gonna be your side walls glue those underneath in place and then these side bits to them and then again you see that's why I've pinned them and that gives you your basic structure for the wall and you can see here to make this section come out here I've actually uh, glued the second bit to this to the inside giving it you know allowing you to build upon it uh, the front and back sections okay, about two and a quarter they, they would have been pinned at the top holding in place then you're going to need four bits about an inch wide you see in places I've actually when I put them together I've angled them off that's just a case of with a sharp knife just carefully run it down and cutting them uh, again these are quite fiddly to fit but with a bit of pinning you can do it and then I don't know if you can see it on this I've got pictures of it that I'll put up hopefully so I wasn't planning on filming this but I then covered it in printer card so it's really thick paper about 300 uh, GSM and use that around here as a, a webbing almost to hold it in place did the same front and back now front has a, a lip on it so front pieces are actually eight inches high so you just make it pretty much the same as the back eight inches so it comes up over whereas the back was attached underneath this goes over the, the front of the front of it and then I just used filler because you'd have nasty if you can see here you know that would be what the top looks like so just to fill fill in the top this is just made from a another bit of foam core be that way but you can make do your own sort of design stuff plus an inch and a quarter the back and goes in and in and these are just little off cuts that go around the top now Next up, you'll uh, have to do the crenellations. Now, they are an inch wide a piece. Now, how I did these is I made a template from card that I then, on the phone call, drew around. Uh, and this is roughly a fifth, an inch wide just under two inches tall and this is probably the most difficult because it's really fiddly to cut cut out but with a sharp uh, craft knife you shouldn't have any problems and that's just glued on and then after that all that's left to do is clad it in bricks Now these are cut out from cardboard say from a cereal box and they're half an inch 
high and about an inch long uh, and then do the same for the pavement which are slightly bigger these are three quarters of an inch wide and again about an inch tool now it's not difficult to do but be prepared to lose a couple of evenings doing it and and that's all there is to it it's, it looks fairly complex but it's not that difficult to do and you shouldn't have too much problems doing it and that's it you're gonna need two of those the other one here and next we'll look at the gatehouse After the walls, I uh, started work on the gatehouse. It's made in a very similar way. Uh, it's a foam core base. And it's six inches high to match the walls. And it's eight inches wide. So you need to cut out two, uh, six, uh, five bits of foam because the gatehouse uh, arch right at the front is made from four bits of foam. You just need one for the back. I didn't really go into detail the back because it's the back, you're not going to see it. Now to get this, I don't know if you can see it here, this little effect here. I cut out an archway on two pieces of the same size. And it's three and a half inches at the bottom and about four inches tall and then use a compass just to uh, get the curve and cut out two of those out of uh, two bits of the wall the same and then glue those together um, glue those together but before you glue those together on the second one you just cut out a little notch like that which is half inch from the bottom and two inches tall and it's like a half inch inwards and that gives you this little step effect here now the next two bits of uh, plan core you do a slightly bigger archway so by a half inch bigger and do the same as what you did with the other two where you glue them together but before you glue them cut out this little notch and then you get this slight nice step effect going in like this uh, <coughs> assembly is done pretty much the same as the walls uh, using pins to hold it in place I haven't put side bits here and I'm not going to because they're going to be butted up against the tower so you're not going to see them I have however put a 2x2 two two square bit in the bottom here just to to strengthen it. Uh, got like the walls there's a cardboard brickwork pan but with a archway design I've still got to do the back. It's just easy enough to do with a compass to draw out the archway. Stick that on on the back I'm gonna do it when it's on the front because I've got the detail here it doesn't go all the way down on the back it will go all the way around and I've got to do the pavement at the top. Crenellations are made the same way as the wall using the template once more going along they're just stuck on uh, the doors let's have a look if I can see if get the doors I just made from bits of fit card which match the size of the uh, inner archway and they've just got a balsa wood pattern laid in and at the back I've stuck on two card fit card hinges and these are going to get glued at the back here we'll do a bit later on first I've got to uh, cover this up which I'm going to do with some printer card and what I'll do is I'll cut 
little slot here and the printer card to this the slot in glue in place and you won't see that which I'll do next okay so we're gonna fill in the arch right now what I've done is I've cut a bit of card same thickness as the arch ray what I'm going to plan to do is glue it in here and then this bit that's overhanging here once it's glued I'll cut it down to shape I've just used an off cut of a project from a project I was doing that as a misprint so this is just thick card that you use on the printer so what we're going to do Just get some PVA. And uh line the walls with it. Once it's dry I'm gonna cut some slits into it to put the door and then attach the doors. if you wanted to uh, get it attached quicker but use this it's quite good it's quite good uh, PV actually uh, by Dovecraft get it from Amazon it uh, dries super quick so I'm getting the PV out of my fingers uh, put that on the edge I've got the crenellation on so I'm going to put it on the edge of the table Starting at the top. It's easy to do when you're not on camera, of course. Get it in there. Make sure it lines up at the back. Like so. Push in. That's looking better. Yeah, yeah this PVA is quite. Can have a lot of working time with it. Both good and bad. Good because it means you can get something in place and then move on. Bad because things like this where you want to get it all in place before. Let's see that's it. Ah, let's come off the back. that to dry okay next up is the tower you're gonna to need two of these and these are nine inches the actual uh, polystyrene block you're gonna need and they are about four inches across now what I did for these just cut two nine by 
uh, four blocks out of polystyrene and glued them together. Uh, when you put them both together, this is slightly over four inches. Have a look. Four and a, four and a bit. Uh, and then leave them to dry. And when they're dry, you just angle the, uh, the corners off, which I'll show you uh, later on in, in the video. So I'll show you how to do that. because I've still got to do it for the end towers. Again, the crenellations are just made from foam core using the template as part of main walls. All that's left to do is to uh, do the brickwork. Now, before with the walls, we've uh, I stuck uh, cut out bricks and stuck them on. But for this, what I'm hoping to do is actually engrave it into the. Uh, polystyrene itself when it's on the uh, advantage of using this material again there half inch wall pan so I'm just going to mark up all the way at one side like so same on the bottom freehand I guess quicker but messier and then what I'm gonna do And for the bricks, I'm not going to do it with a ruler, I'm just going to do it freehand. Scoring, you've got scoring quite deeply. Because it shows up now because of the pen. I use a ballpoint pen for this. But when you paint it, you're still going to want to be able to see it. So there you are, that's brickwork done. What I'll do is a uh, Got to do the rest now. One thing I would say about the crenellations at the top, I did try and cut them in one piece and fold them over. That worked out too difficult, so in the end, I just cut a three inch piece here and a single inch piece here. And I'm going to get some filler and ink to fill the gaps in. I'll sort of do now, actually, while we're here, before I carry on with the brickwork. Filler's great. It's all your, all your sins. So yeah, grab a little bit like, like so, a mini bit, and just sort of work it in. Do that on this bit here. Probably not needing as much. And there we go. Might just uh, push that bit down a bit of a sculpting tool or something. But yeah, so then that covers up the join. And you can see there's a join there. That's what it looked like before. And that's what it looked like after. So yep, I should get on with that off camera and finish the brickwork. I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. 
the uh, bricks have all been done now, all the way around. This where it joins, you're not really going to see much of this. There's going to be some doors here, and the wall's going to go here. So, but try to incorporate that. Could have filled that, but I said it's not worth it because it's going to be uh, not going to be seen. Uh, I've filled all the uh, top bits of the, around the crenellations, and I've also marked the pavement at the top. Now it looks a bit messy, so I've had to do it freehand. So uh, don't do what Kev's done and put the uh, scoring in of the pavement at the top before you've uh, pavement the flagstones at the top before you do your crenellations. That'd be a lot easier, but it don't look too bad. It's just a bit, bit wonky. So yeah, and that. Is your tower build? I love working with foam because unlike uh, the walls and the gatehouse where they were made from foam core and then the bricks stuck on with uh, from card, which took hours, this took minutes. Uh, no more than five minutes, and suddenly you got a whole lovely and detailed brick pattern. So that is your tower. All that's left to do. My other one, and then that's it. Ashley Tower was done in the gatehouse. Next up is the gatehouse side walls. Uh, these go either side of the gatehouse, so uh, let me show you. So the gatehouse would be there. These go either side with the tower here and the tower there. But these are actually made from uh, blue polystyrene, really high density foam, which is great to work with. Uh, now, these, and probably look more complex than they are, they're basically a six. Easy to show on this side, actually. Six by six block with a tower that is again six inches by two inches. The tower just get is uh, angled off here, which we'll show you later on in the video, and it's just stuck to the top. Now the front bit is made from six inches and two inches wide and then you uh, draw this curve design on and cut that out and then you come to the front and you can see where I've done a quick guideline and you cut cut it so it's angled off and that's all that is and then glue that on and it's more crenellations now here got to add filler in this is quite it's got to go round you don't need to put crenellations on this side or the back of the tower I believe there are some on the actual real thing but this makes it easier to get get the mold to and likewise here plus the wall section it's gonna connect in at that bit so you don't need crenellations there because you need to get access to the walkway but there probably would have been some here and here in the movie but again just like the walk section here doesn't have crenellations at the back for ease of access I'm going to do that and I like the towers this just needs brick pattern scored into it I don't believe there is a brick pattern on the front I think this is actually quite smooth and I might just bit of filler in there maybe a bit of filler there but I don't think I'll need it because that'll be part of the wall pound I think definitely filler around the crenellations well that's it I mean that is it looks actually more complex than what it is just really nice and simple okay but all the main bits built apart from the uh, towers at the end wall but before we make them I'm gonna add some uh, details to the uh, to to the tower such as doorways and hatchways so you can move around the tower. I'm going to put a hatchway at the 
top of the towers here so you can get up and doorways so you can get into them along here along the walls these will take four doorways and these will have two <coughs> now you could make the doorways yourself uh, but for the detail I wanted, it just worked out too complex, so I went to, and uh, forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, but uh, Antoni Itius Workshop, I'll put a link in the description, uh, and you can get, for a few quid, you can get some uh, resin doorways, which are lovely and detailed. I'm just going to focus in on that, probably not, go on camera, you can do it, or not. Anyway, that's super detailed, so we're just going to use those. So, we're just going to stick these in place. The easiest one to stick in place will be on these pieces here. They're just going to go in there, like so. So, get some glue. I might add a doorway, but I don't know. Let's glue those in. That's in. <coughs> now, these are only a few quid, so I just think it's. But the hatchways, we are going to scratch build because the hatchways are actually probably more expensive than the sites I've seen elsewhere. Like that. Now, for these, you're going to need one that's going to go on the bottom here, on the inside of the, of the wall, on both of them, so you can actually get into the tower when you're inside the castle. The castle it is. out of the tower so uh, offer it up offer the wall up uh, if I move, move a few bits so you can see what I'm doing here so yeah so you need to uh, be able to get out of the tower Does it? I'll just go uh, to here, isn't it? This is it. Have it like that. Oh. that. So actually, you don't need as many doors as what I first thought. Yeah, you do, because I'm going to want to put a tower, um, a door here, so you can walk along the walkway. Let's, let's try and assemble it at my desk, so you can see what's what. But it's here, so you got that one at the back, door, and it's going to go at the back, like so, ah, yes, and here. So what we're going to need... Move the camera a bit. What we're going to need is a doorway here on that side and one over there. So, what I'll do is I'll come back and I've stuck those in place. Okay, that's the uh, doors glued onto the towers done. So, we have one there, one there, one here, one there, and then two at the bottom and the back, and two more coming into here but next we need to do we're going to need to be able to get up to these places here now to do that we're going to need hatchways 
Now, you again can buy them, but they're so simple to make that I'm just going to make them, which is what I'll show you how to do next. Okay, to make the hatchways, what we're going to need is a one inch by one inch strip of uh, balsa wood. About two, three mil balsa wood. You can make it out of card, of course, but balsa wood just has a nice wood grain effect. One thing to note when cutting wood grain is it will be more difficult to cut against the grain than with the grain of the wood. So, as your so knife needs to be sharp, use a metal rule, push quite firmly, and that comes away. Now cutting with the grain, really easy. No effort whatsoever. Now, what you want to do, <coughs> grab a pen and score in the details of the trapdoor. Make sure you go with the grain of the wood, otherwise it will look funny, and don't push too hard, otherwise you'll split the wood. And also, when you're, trying, when you're doing this, try and have the pen as uh, straight as possible, as vertical as possible. Just carefully go, do this freehand, otherwise it looks a bit regimental. But at the same time, make sure you're being careful to keep them somewhat straight. There we go. So that's it. You may have to uh, go over it a few times to get a nice deep, deep uh, score line. So that's it. Next, we're going to make the hinges. Now for this, just simply uh, getting a little bit of card and cutting a triangle pattern out of it. So first give it that. So yeah, a little bit of card. We're just going to cut two little triangle patterns. And these are going to be your hinges. Uh, that's what we do some glue. Blob of glue in there. Glue them in place. There we go. Uh, put them here. Any card will do for this, serial card. This is a printable photo paper, um, printable cardstock paper. So uh, basically thick paper, which is ideal for projects such as this. So there you go. Next, we've got to make a little circle. I don't know if you can see it here because it's see-through, but there's a little circle ring that's going to be there that you can use to pull the door up. To make that, just use one of these, which is the bits on the end of brushes to keep them uh, when you first get new brushes. You get a new brush, you get this little bit in, so take one of those. Sharp knife. And just cut about a mil thick. Let's cut through it. Try not to lose it like what I've just done. Oh, yeah, I've lost it. Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> Bounced off. There you go. And again, put some glue in the end. Nice thing about PVA is it glues, it dries clear. It glues clear. And just stick it in about there. Like so, leave that to dry and just make three more of those, which I've already done. Here's some I made earlier in true blue beater fashion. Once they've all dried, we're going to click uh, glue them onto the uh, onto the towers. Now we uh, we've got our trapdoors and we want to glue them in. Uh, put one there. Think which way it would open. Will it open something like that? 
if you come out there, and I'm thinking like that. So I'm just going to glue these in place. Put some glue on it. Just put it towards the end there. Like so. Think I'm gonna have that back like that. I'll have that at the back of the trapdoor there, I think. I think in the films they've got some sort of dome stairwell thing coming up, but for ease of a build. Plus you have too much going on in there, you won't be able to move your models around. There's that one. Just got to do uh, this side here. Didn't take too long. Squidge and glue. Drop in. And final one. Okay, well, I'm gonna let that all dry. Pretty much the gatehouse uh, completed here now. Uh, all I've got to do is uh, add in the doors here, which I'm not going to do until we paint. Because it would just be easier to do when it's not painted. Anything that's left for us to make now is the little end corner of the walls. There's a little sort of mini tower turret thing if you look on pictures. I'll try and put one up if I remember as I'm talking about this. Now when you've assembled what we've made so far, there'll be uh, 6 inches uh, shy of 48, so shy of 4, four foot, so that'll be 42 inches, so 3 foot either end. And so these towers are of course 3 inches. Um, so yeah, three inches. It's 42 inches in total. We want it to be 48 inches or four foot. Uh, what we've got to do now is angle, so it's not totally square. We need to angle it off, so you know, similar to how this tower is, but on a smaller scale. Now to do that, it's quite simple. I'll just raise this for a minute, just to, what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna offer it up where we want. And just with our pen, I think it's going to be pretty much a case of coming up to here, putting a mark here where we want it, so we're going to angle it up like so. Mark here, and then with a set square, with a set square. Put in an opposite mark. Again, like so, the set scrap to the mark we made, and that's where we want it on the opposite side. Uh, I and mean, what you're going to want to do is sort of measure do a 45 degree uh, angle there. Mark 45 degrees, or if you don't have a protractor, which not everyone does, one way of doing it would be to measure how much it is and, and then along the top here, that's just over half an inch. You just put a mark there, put a 
marked there. And this one is exactly half an inch. So again, of course you had a protractor, it'd just be easy to get your 45 degree angle, but not everyone does, so I thought I'd show you this way. Put your mark there, and there you've got your angle you want you want to carve. Now what you've got to do now we've got these. Do you need to draw guidelines down? Easiest way to do this. With a set square. Again. Offer it up, put it against the mark, draw a line down. Here we go on this side. Find out the edge and where it where your mark is, offer the set square up. Draw a line down. Now this is your guideline for when you're cutting these out. So you need to do that on With all of you, where you've done markings. That's, so it's eight lines, which would be eight cuts, four corners. <clears throat> okay. You're gonna to have to cut them out. Now, to cut these out, you've got a number of different options. You can use a retractable knife such as this, probably a bit bigger than this, and cut down carefully, no fingers underneath, like so. You can use a hand hut wire cutter like this it's an old games workshop one from back in the day cut down like that but both of these methods are not that accurate what i'd recommend is do what i do if you're serious about terrain building get yourself a desktop wire cutter which we'll move over to now this is my uh desktop wire cutter i got this from ebay for only 28 pound and it's been it's been amazing for terrain projects i wish i got one earlier now the reason I say this is because when you're cutting bits you know, big depth like this you can just cut it through, slide it through and it just cuts beautifully but the nice thing about this one is this arm's just held in like so so what you can do is loosen this off and then you can have it angled so Move the camera around, change the shot. So what you can do is now marks here. You can have it like so. So I've angled it like that. So all I've got to do now turn it on, cut it, pull it through, and we're done. So which I'll do. In a minute, what I'll do is I'll get this all set up properly, turned on, and show you cutting it. So here's it all set up. Here's our marked bit. All you do is offer it up and stay within the line. You probably want to take a bit more time what I'm doing here. I'm probably slightly rushing it for the purpose of the video. But it's this simple. You wouldn't get a good finish as this if you're doing it with a knife or with a handheld wire cutter and it's just so quick so easy if you're serious about doing terrain projects I'd highly recommend these so quick and easy all right that's so all we do let me go in do this one got to do this on the other corners and the other block another thing you got to do afterwards which 
is added in the brickwork pattern and the floor pattern as done elsewhere. So what I'll do is I'll continue cutting these out do the brickwork pattern and we'll come back to do the crenellations and that is then our Minister of Build complete really. Okay to make the crenellations I mentioned earlier I created a template out of card so you just take that place it onto a bit of foam core draw around it Again, as always, take more time than not I'm doing. I'm just quickly doing it for the purposes of the camera. So, do that. Move it across. Draw around it again. What you're going to want to do. So these end towers, you're going to need like a basically a four-inch covering, which is four of these. So. Uh, draw four of these. Now, cutting these out can be a bit tricky because foam core is quite difficult to uh, cut corners and rounded bits, uh, cut corners, cut rounded bits. Foam core doesn't like being cut rounded bits and there you are, see so what it roughly looks like. To cut it out, what happens is the more you cut the more it will get structurally weak, so I found the best best way to cut it out. Let's do these first, like so. so I guess put a bit of force onto it to cut around the angle bits, and with a really sharp knife, otherwise it will just tear the foam core. I think this knife's getting to the end of its, this blade's getting into its uh, life span. Then, uh, the next bits you cut out are these bits. It's meant to be a, a war torn castle. And next, cut these bits. Being careful because at this stage it's getting a little, little delicate. And this is how you'd make the crenellations for the entire piece. Oh. See here, my knife's given up. Okay, next up, cut in between. Glad this is the last crenellation I've got to do. My knife, this is blade changed, and then just pop these bits out. Get these out, get your knife, just push them through and pull them off. Simple. Get your wall piece. And what we're gonna do, stick it here, and these ones gonna be glued in like that. That's what we're going to do now. Just glue them in place, do the other one, and that 
is is the actual building work done. Okay, this is it. All the construction done now. So, uh, is it lined up roughly? See it there. Across there. That's four foot. All we got to do now is paint it. Okay, so I've undercoated it all. It's all just done in black. One thing to note when you're doing terrain projects is don't use miniature paints because that will work out expensive. Uh, I actually use emulsion paints and what I do is I get little tester pots. This one comes from Wilkinson's called Supernova which is the black. It's only a couple of quid and one pot will get last you a long way. You have to water them down uh, so the same consistency as your miniature paints. Other alternatives would be uh, acrylics from uh, craft stores and kids poster paints but the uh, problem with poster paints is they're uh, they kind of designed so they wash away with water so when you get them wet again uh, the paint just runs off so I wouldn't recommend that it's either acrylics or it's more easy and readily is these uh, tester pots uh, so this is done in black it's more of a mist coat really but it, it's just because the materials used are quite porous such as polystyrene phone call card so it's just designed to uh, make the proper layers of paint go on better and for that I'm gonna actually start off with this one which is called uh, Flintstone it's a nice grey kind of like Dawnstone I guess and then go which I actually don't have on me at the moment go over with like a, a white light uh, grey bordered on white and that's all I'm gonna do okay this is it painted in the uh, Flintstone grey uh, I've done all the parts and next we've just got to put the, hopefully the final uh, actual finished colour on which I've chosen something called uh, Urban Grey which is this sort of off-white colour so I'm hoping this will this will be the final colour problem is with using emulsions is they're designed to uh, be completely flat and even because that's, that's what you want on your wall which is not always conducive to uh, terrain uh, because you want sort of different shades and stuff in your finished model so hopefully this will this will look right I might have to do a bit of washing or a bit of dry brush another colour but we'll see so I'll crack on with this now this is it um, painted I've not given it a heavy coat so uh, there's some, some definition on it I'm quite pleased with the actual colour I like that so it's not pure white I have to say I uh, Enjoyed painting the. Uh, I enjoyed painting the uh, polystyrene more than the uh, the card bricks. I think if I ever did this again, I'd make this from polystyrene. It just looks it looks better. So you can see on, on these bits here, just more detail of the uh, rough surface of polystyrene. All that's left to do now is paint the doors and trap doors in some sort of brown, I guess, and pick out the metal work that we added on in places so I'll get that done now okay that's all the uh, doors and trapdoors painted <coughs> you can sort of see the trapdoors here and you can see the uh, the ring that we put on made out of the uh, paint protectors and the doors and the woodwork in general was base coated in Rhinox hide it was then given in a uh, a dry brushing of carrick stone and the metal work was just iron breaker did the same for the doors but you will notice on the doors when you look at pictures is they've got like a copper inlay in, in between uh, so what how I've done that is I just painted that an old color called scaly green just kind of nice copper effect which you see here and then using a uh, fine tip marker pen I just drew some little designs in there all that's left to do now is actually glue these in place and that's it we're done we and then set it up and see it see it all finished <laughs>
you enjoyed this video please like and share it and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Game on and continue to support our wonderful hobby.